We started the development of Crash Bandicoot with the idea that we wanted to create a Warner Brothers cartoon character feel within a 3D game. So we brought in 2D classic cartoon animators to help us design the character. And then we animated him in Alias Wavefront to create what we hope was a squash and stretch classic look. Hi, I'm Jason Rubin from Naughty Dog. We're here today to give you a behind the scenes look into the making of Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Crash Bandicoot 2 has a very refined gameplay. We took the response we got from players of Crash 1 and the knowledge we gained in creating the first product and sharpened the focus of gameplay in the sequel. Well, well, well. If it isn't Crash Bandicoot, welcome. Instead of a linear map, Crash 2's levels are accessed through a warfare, allowing players to choose which levels he or she would like to attempt next. The levels are larger, with more branch and they allow greater freedom of movement and camera control. There are far more secret areas, with over one-third of the game off the main path. The arts changed drastically between Crash 1 and Crash 2. Crash 1's engine was thrown out. Crash 2's engine is totally new. It allows us to have more polygons in the background, more frames of animation in Crash, more detailed environments, and the ability to do neat environmental uh, effect things that bring the viewer in, bring the player in, and make them feel like they're in a real environment. It has procedural rain, which is actual 3D raindrops that come through the environment. When the camera looks down, the rain actually moves as if it's in 3D, and you're looking at a down angle with the rain. On a snow level, when you're running into the snow, the snow comes at you and makes you feel like you're in the level. We have a specular renderer on our gems, which allow the gems to look like gems as opposed to look like really flat shaded things rotating. We have reflection effects in the ice that make Crash Bandicoot and everything else in the environment reflect in the ice, making it really feel like ice. We've been able to add a whole slew of new things to each and every level based on the fact that instead of saying, okay, let's go make Crash 1.5, use the same engine, make some new levels, we did Crash 2. The character animations improved greatly. We have 15 times as much storage for animation in the game and over 20 times as much animation total in the game, allowing almost every death to have its own unique animation that goes along with it. Not only can you walk, jump, run, but you can also ride on the back of a bear cub. You can run away from a boulder. You can ride on a jet ski. You can ride on a jet pack that's actually free floating in zero gravity. You can do a lot of things you never did before. And you can do a lot of things that you've never seen before in any other game. For example, there are levels where Crash can jump up in the air, spin around, and dive underground, creating a little mound. And he can then move around as this mound getting by everything that's on the surface, but still attacking them by sticking his arm up and spinning them away. One of the cool new things in Crash Bandicoot 2 are the, the lip-synced, like, holographic characters in, in the warp room. <laughs> These are particularly cool because they're a combination of tons of people on the team's individual efforts. You got like animators who had to do the facial expressions, the lip syncing with the, the dialogue, the, the textures, and you had programmers doing like the, the holographic effect, the lens flare, audio, video spooling and lip syncing. And it all comes together and brings a, an artificial character to life in a way that I don't think we've seen before in video games. Another thing I'm really proud of is the way in which we, we utilize the resource of the CD to bring to the player levels that are probably about 10 times as large as the memory of the PlayStation. We do this by kind of laying the whole level out on disc and bringing it in piece by piece in a transparent manner. This is a really complicated, tricky technology somewhere between spooling and virtual memory, and it enables us to use the CD to bring more detail, more game objects, just more stuff into the game. Another thing we're proud of is 
the sheer number of polygons we muscle through the crash engine. Just a real lot of detail on the screen, and I think that we can pretty much say that no other next generation game has as much background detail as Crash does. PlayStation Underground's asked me to tell you a little bit about Crash Bandicoot 3, War. I wanted to be sure that we preserved the classic intuitive gameplay that has made the Crash series so successful. We found that gamers worldwide truly enjoy the structured interactions of this style. The second thing we wanted to do with Crash Bandicoot Warp is that we wanted to introduce free roaming gameplay. To add excitement, we've created some radically new styles of levels. We still have a mission-based objective, but at the same time, the camera is opened up and you're free roaming. In addition, we wanted to broaden the replay value of the game so that players got more for their money, they got more bang for the buck. We added a time trial mode, but now they can race against the clock, they can compete against their friends, their brothers, their sisters, and they can put up scores with their names in it to show exactly how well they've done. In the succession from Crash 1 to Crash 2 to Crash Warp, we as a team, and I personally, have learned a tremendous number of things. In Crash 1 and 2, the, the maximum distance at which you could see any polygon was about 70 meters. In Crash Warp, we've opened that up to 700 and some odd meters. Like in the medieval levels, there's a, a castle at the end that you can see nearly from the beginning of the level. And as you go through almost a kilometer of level distance, like you keep seeing the castle every time you get closer and closer as you go over press. Because we've been able to achieve things that just haven't been seen before on the PlayStation. One of the accomplishments that we did in Crash Bandicoot uh, Cortex Strikes Back is we had Crash be able to wade into water and to subdivide perfectly in the water, which is something that's really not been seen before on the PlayStation. And at first, there was some debate whether it was feasible. Now we've gone another step in Crash Bandicoot Warp, we have entire rounds where everything is floating in the water. We have environment mapping against waves, and the waves are moving in a very realistic ocean pattern, but you can see the reflection of the world in the waves, which gives a very, very realistic effect. I think most people, including ourselves, until this project thought it was not possible to pull off that, that many things, that much subdivision in a level, that you just would not have the speed to do something like that. I think the way we pulled it off was with perseverance and with trying things and just keep working at it and working at it and working at it until we were able to get within the frame rate that we, that we wanted. We've learned a tremendous amount about gameplay. <laughs> Making a new mechanic and trying to make it play well and work with Jason's animation for the character because it all has to integrate together. Crash is like driving along on the motorcycle and he turns, he's got to bring the motorcycle down, put his knee on the ground like the way a real motorcycle rider does. And so there's a real interaction between the gameplay programming, controlling the feel of that motorcycle and the animation. And that's probably one of the most important programming things. If the game doesn't feel good, if it's clunky, then it's not fun. When we uh, approach a level, this is an example, this is uh, Arabian level M. It's basically somewhere about two-thirds of the way into the game. Um, we think in terms of the player's abilities at that point, and we also think in terms of the, the character's abilities. Now, one of the things we wanted to do was bounce on tarps, because bouncing is a fun mechanic. Kids love to bounce on beds, and it's just always fun to do. We decided to do something that hadn't been done before. In Crash 2, um, all the enemies on the hang section you had to avoid. You couldn't um, specifically attack any particular enemy. And in this game, Crash will actually get to fight enemies while hanging. Our biggest challenge has been how to add more depth and excitement. I've always been proud of how Crash's moves need to be used in combination. Uh, the new moves, of course, are great. Well, we've got all we've got a bunch of power-ups that you gain across the little game as you play. And what's really nice about that is basically the character grows as you're playing. Crash warped his combinations like the slide, double jump, death tornado, which add greatly to the depth of the gameplay. At first, they'll just jump on an enemy, but after they get good at the combo, now they'll slide, jump, jump, and hover and come down on them at a much more aggressive style. 
and, and the deaths are an important part of this game, as we learned in 2, is that people, if they die and there's something funny that happens at the end of it, it sort of softens the blow of taking a hit. We have the game designers uh, come up with their wacky ideas of what we should do, and we have the artists uh, coming up with their editions of what would look cool with that idea or what would be best suited for that idea. Well, we start out with the uh, just a rough vignettes, just to get the feel of which direction we should go. And then uh, once we see that we're in the uh, right environment, so we go straight to the line art, and the line art is the more finished artwork that leads eventually to being a color key, which uh, has the actual palette of the of that level so that way we can take different elements of the warped background and go to the computer and start modeling and start making textures and start applying lighting and, and coloring and things like that or I can also do a lot of palette shifts and if for example I can take the daytime and I can make a nighttime version of it rather quickly there have been a lot of really proud moments for Naughty Dog in the Crash series but I think maybe the proudest moment has been seeing the culmination of technical achievements and artistic achievements that came together with some of our water levels in Crash Bandicoot Warped. Our, our ocean level is just beautiful. I think we have a gameplay style that is truly new and truly unique. And I think that it's extremely fun, and on top of that, technically, it's an extremely hard achievement. Well, you've crashed a few parties before, but I never expected you to make it this far. Now, I have to lay down a challenge to the PlayStation Underground viewers. I've heard that you're some of the best video game players, some of the best PlayStation players out there. And I want to see if that's actually true. The Naughty Dogs, all of the Sony testers, our Sony producers, as well as Mark Cerny, have been playing our time trial mode, and you'll be able to find in the credits of the game what all of our best times were. You don't turn back. I will inflict a thousand years of suffering on you and the entire universe! And the challenge is, can you actually beat that time? And I have to say, within that group of people, there are some darn good players, so it's going to be quite a challenge. So the challenge is out to you now. This time we're going to be fighting against Tiny in the Coliseum. He's a Roman gladiator. Hey, Mark. What's going on? We'll give you a Thanks for the underground footage. We'll put you in the next underground. I got a tail. 